Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope life is treating you exceptionally well. Today, as you can see in the title, we are talking about why hub motors might be better than mid-drive motors. This is a hotly debated topic in the e-bike world, and I'm probably going to make a follow-up video on the reasons why mid-drive motors might be better than hub motors. So stay cool, I'm not taking sides here. Although, personally, I do believe overall, in most situations, hub motors are the way to go. And in case you're wondering, right now this bike is a hub motor bike. And it's not even anything fancy. It's just a Bafang, I'll show it to you guys, 750 watt, that I have a new controller, a 60 volt battery, and I'm getting a ton of performance out of this little, tiny, convenient, easy to maintain motor. But more on that, in this video. And before jumping too deep into this topic, I do want to give you guys a quick announcement. We have a new bike coming to the channel. I'm super excited. It's not just any bike. It's what I'm going to call the feature of e-bikes. It has tons of next-gen features. It's expensive. I purchased it with my own money. It wasn't a freebie or anything like that. And I plan on doing heavy upgrades, similar to what I did with this bike because I'm very happy with it, but just taking it to the next level. So if you want to hear more details on that, stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll tell you guys all the minute details. All right, but getting back on topic, first thing I want to say on the whole mid-drive versus hub motor debate, this is only possible due to the awesome technology that is, ooh, a bike shop, that is electric motors. If you quickly think about gas bikes, none of them have hub motor configurations. It's just not possible with a internal combustion engine. All of those are mid-drive because they have to be. Internal combustion engines or ICE engines are both too big and too finicky. I mean, they have liquid fuel to put them inside of a spinning wheel. You can do this, however, no problem with electric motors. And if you really think about it, that is the ideal location, all else being equal, to put the motor because you want the power to go from the motor to the wheel. So if they're all in the same component, it's all one piece, that's, that's ideal. But due to the limitations of ICE engines, they have to place them in the middle of the bike, further away from where they want the power. And then they transmit the power from the motor to the wheel using some kind of a drivetrain. Now, drivetrains over time have been optimized. They're pretty good at what they do, but no drivetrain is 100% efficient. There's going to be power loss, inefficiencies, play between where the power is and the wheel when you have a drivetrain involved, even if it's a very high quality one. Now, there is a pro to drivetrains, and that is because it delivers the power from the motor to the wheel. It allows you to easily change the gear ratio. This Wawa has Tesla charging stations. I'm still waiting for e-bikes to have that charge connector. I mean, that would just be so awesome. In 15 minutes with that kind of DC power, you can probably get like a quarter of a charge. But on the topic of gearing, I have to mention that even with a hub motor, you can still change the gear ratio. And there's two ways of doing this. Uh, the most obvious way is to get a geared hub motor. So these have uh, a set of planetary gears on the inside and they often have a, uh, a one to five gear reduction. Or is it five to one? I think it's five to one. And that's the reason why geared hub motors tend to be smaller than direct drive hub motors, which don't have that gearing. It makes them more efficient and you can get more out of a smaller motor. And then the other way to affect the gearing is the, the rim. The smaller the rim, the greater the torque, so the lower the gearing. And the bigger the rim or the bigger the wheel the motor has to rotate, that makes the gearing higher and tends to also increase your top speed but lower your acceleration. So a configuration like I have here, having both a geared hub motor and a small diameter wheel, that makes this very efficient at hill climbing and good at acceleration. Both of which are often the complaints or the shortcomings of hub motor systems. And I gotta say, I do not suffer from any of these with this build. 
So yeah, to put a bow on this segment, I've learned personally that raw power, battery voltage, that's a big one, has a bigger impact on acceleration performance than the gear ratio when it comes to electric uh, drivetrains. Gearing definitely does affect uh, internal combustion engines a lot more than electric motors. Okay, now the next thing I wanna talk about is the efficiency or the power loss and the maintenance of the drivetrain itself. So with the hub motor, because it's in the wheel where you want the power to be delivered, it's all one piece, there essentially is no drivetrain and thus no energy loss and maintenance. But when you have a mid-drive configuration, the story is completely different. And it's at this point that I wanna make the distinction between a drivetrain you find on a bicycle and that that you find on a motorcycle because they are not the same. So to avoid energy loss, you want there to be the, the strongest, most tight connection possible between the motor and where you want the power. Obviously with the hub motor, we have that by default. The motor is literally bolted to the axle. But on a mid-drive with a bike, we have a chain that connects to a cassette in the back. Because bikes are designed to be pedaled by human leg power, this is a freewheel, and this of course allows you to keep your feet in place when the bike is coasting. Nice to have on a bicycle, but on a motorcycle drivetrain, it doesn't have this freewheeling ability. The rear sprocket is bolted to the wheel, similar to how the disc brake is bolted to the wheel, so there's no play. So when you have a mid-drive motor, you want a motorcycle drivetrain. You want the rear sprocket to be bolted to the wheel to eliminate as much looseness and play between the power and the wheel as possible. And the reality is with the bicycle, you just don't have that. You have to deal with this play in the drivetrain. And if you want to test yourself how much play or looseness there is in your bicycle drivetrain, go to your bike, like I'm doing right now, and go backwards a little bit. And then at random points in this backward rotation, try to apply pressure. And you're gonna find that in a lot of locations, there's quite a bit of play before the teeth activate. So that looseness between the, the teeth of the freewheel is in contrast to a sprocket, which would just always be tight and activated. So yeah, before you upgrade to a mid-drive motor, check your cassette in the back and make sure that it's a high quality one with tight tolerances. And then I guess the final thing is the price tag and just the general availability. So with hub motors, Probably due to their simplicity, they tend to be cheaper than mid-drive motors, and there's a wide variety of them to choose from. So yeah, those are the reasons that I think make hub motors better than mid-drive motors. But there are some situations, some applications, where mid-drives do make more sense, and I'm probably going to cover that in an upcoming video, so make sure you are subscribed to see that. Okay, now as promised, I'm going to tell you guys more about the bike that I teased in the beginning of this video. So I finally pulled the trigger on the P51. It is an expensive bike, almost $4,000. But the, the frame itself, the engineering, the components, I think have so much potential. The suspension is completely next level. I'm excited to actually get it and experience it firsthand. As mentioned, I want to upgrade it, and I think I could easily put two 72 volt batteries on the inside of this frame. For the time being, I'll probably keep the motor on it because once you supercharge it with higher volts and a better controller, you'll be surprised of how much it changes what the motor can do. I already purchased a custom 72 volt, 15 amp hour battery. It is gonna take about like two to three weeks for them to build that battery, unfortunately. So I'll probably get the bike before the battery, but that just allows me time to keep it stock and give you guys a, a basic review of the bike before making these changes. So yeah, either way, I'm super excited to finally be upgrading my bike. This one has done me extremely well and it is for sale currently. So I guess I'll leave the, the, the listing below if you guys wanna check it out, if it's still available. With all that said, that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like before you go. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.